on today's episode, I am so excited to be talking with none other than McClinty Hunter. He is a Grammy-nominated jazz artist who tours all over the world, and he now teaches. He has he teaches at the Kip Academy. He has a debut album out called The Groove Hunter that he released in 2018, and he tours all over the world, and he is also the subject of a brand new documentary. So I am so excited to welcome him to the show. So glad to have you. Thank you for having me, Samantha. Appreciate it. Yeah, so McClinty, we grew up together, and yes. man, I mean, back in the day, I remember <laughs> you on the drums in the children's choir, on the drums <laughs> with Darren Atwater, the choir, and I just am so excited to see your career journey now where you are a full-time <laughs> professional musician, which I know is not easy to do, so mm -hmm. How did you decide to even take that path? Yes. Well, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out because none of this, honestly, as I've been thinking over my life over, you know, the last, this is how God has been blessing me. You know, you, you look at how your steps have been ordered and like, I got to give a huge shout out to Mother McCoy <laughs> because she is the one that gave me my first gig. How about that? So shout outs to mom. Um, your mother gave me the great opportunity to start at the <laughs> at the church, play for the children's choir. Yeah. And that's how it all started, to be honest. Wow. I mean, it all it all started from there, you know. Um, I want to go way too far back because I get long winded. But yeah, I mean, playing at Long Reach in Columbia, Maryland, um, really put me on a path to become the musician I am today. Uh, from there, I was able to meet um, my great mentor, Darren Atwater, he took me under his wing and wow, I mean, the, the rest is history. I mean, it's one of those things that I didn't know that I wanted to become a professional musician until mm -hmm. <clears throat> I met Darren, which is indicative of uh, why I became a, a teacher. Um, I think it's important for our uh, community to see uh, people that, that look like them yeah. uh, pursuing their goals and dreams. And so, Meeting Darren at a, probably the age of 14, 15 years old just really uh, exposed me not only to the music, but what I could possibly do, uh, the belief that I could be successful in music. And so uh, from there, I was able to go to Morgan State and transfer to Howard and Juilliard. And coming to New York was ulti my ultimate goal. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I, I constantly am on my you know, knees praising God for um, this gift that he's given me. Yeah. Because I'm able to see like how all the things, we used to sing that song all the time, or the steps. Right. <laughs> and like, it's, it's, it's such, I mean, I didn't have a testimony then at 14, 15, <laughs> but now I'm like, oh yeah, I see like, wow, everything how is connected. Everything works I mean, together. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, even from, you know, Pastor Hondo and, Sister Vicky, like everybody, this everybody played their role, and um, got me to this point where I was able to even play with uh, Kenny Garrett. Yeah, and that was my first jazz uh, show that uh, Darren took me to. Wow, which was to see him. That's so, amazing. So now you're playing and yeah, you're, you're <laughs> peers with people who you were watching and saying, "Oh my goodness, they're the best musicians ever," and now. Yes. You're on their album. That's that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, it's like so that was even, you know, one of the most memorable experiences that I had was yeah. uh playing with Kenny Garrett <clears throat> in DC um at the place called Blues Alley, which Darren took me to when I was about 14, 15 years old. And Darren walking up to me in the club and I'm like, <laughs> Wow, this is kinda <laughs> like you know, it's like that Matrix thing is happening. Yeah, You're like, yeah. whoa, whoa. Like, all everything is like full circle. I'm like, Darren is here. Kenny is there. And I'm like, I was sitting right there. You know what I'm saying? You remember that? He's, you know, we just, it was just, it was crazy. Wow. But, um, yes, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. That's awesome. So talk <clears> to <throat> us about, you started off with playing gospel and you played by ear, right? Yeah, yeah. So you didn't even learn to read music until when? <laughs> <laughs> so I was about 19, 
uh, 18, 19 years old, uh, you know, I probably like my, around my senior year in high school, shout out to Oakland Mills, class of 99. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I decided I wanted to become a professional musician. And so Darren was like, hey, listen, well, you gotta, you know, you probably wanna learn how to read music. And I'm like, oh man, what am I gonna do? Uh, so I took the summer to uh, study with uh, a guy named Grant Menifee of Ellicott City. And um, <clears throat> within that summer, I was able to learn how to read, get the basics um, to the point where I was able to get into uh, Morgan State's music uh, department. And uh, I met Chris Dave, which is a great drummer, um, yeah. good friends with Darren, who was playing with Kenny Garrett at the time and um, found out he went to Howard. So I was like, well, it's gotta be something in the water over there. Let me, uh, yeah, let me, <laughs> let me go down to DC. So I ended up going to Howard, you know? And um, it was all about me coming to New York. So I, I applied to all the grad schools in New York, but um, a lot of hours, a lot of hours in the practice room, learning how to yeah. master that skill because uh, I could play, which was the gift that God had already given me, but like right. being able to see it on paper yeah. on cheap was something that, um, Took a little while for me to get, and I still, honestly, it's not my strongest suit, but um, I get the job done. And so, uh, yeah, this is something I just had to put in a lot of hours, a lot of I hours. I mean, and for those of you who may not know, Juilliard is not, you don't just walk in. So, <laughs> yeah. to be able to go from, you know, not even, I mean, a lot of people who go there, I mean, they come out reading music at three and four and five. Yeah. Oh, so to start at 18, 19 and be Yeah, I was, a, yeah, not even a jazz drummer. Like, honestly, yeah. I was like, I was still kind of learning the, the style of music. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, our, from studying jazz at, um, at Juilliard, and mostly, honestly, it started from Howard, but um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I saw the correlation between, you know, Black music has a certain texture, has a certain rhythmic base. And so once I was able to kind of grab a hold to that feeling of what swinging was all about, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, it's, this is all in the same kind of pot, and you kind of just, instead of playing it this way, you play it this way, and, you know, I saw the similarities, but... um. Yeah, yeah, still, it's still to this day, I'm like, I don't really consider myself a jazz drummer. I'm like, <laughs> I kind of do it all. I could do, you know. No, I mean, you, I listen to you play and I'm just blown away because, I mean, you play, there's all different, there's kind of seems like there's sub genres of jazz. So when you say yeah. jazz, people might not really know what I mean. Right. So we're not talking like the cool, smooth elevator music over yeah. here. We're talking yeah. about, you know, you do the kind of jazz where, <laughs> you can completely get lost and it. <laughs> yeah. it's like every musician's doing their own, own song yeah. and yeah. they're all playing it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you even kind of stay grounded in that without just getting lost? I tell you, Samantha, for the longest time, it sounded just like how you just described <laughs> it. I was like, what is going on? And the style of music, you know, that genre we call straight ahead jazz, mm -hmm. like, which is, you know, representative of, you know, Miles Davis, John Coltrane. This is like the black American classic, classic music, um, classical music. So, yeah, it's a lot going on. It's a lot. But once you understand the concept that it's actually a song that is being played and that we are basically changing the melody as we as we're going along. Yeah. And music has a language and just like how we're able to converse and, and go and talk about different things. Um, it's the same thing kind of happening in music, but you got to understand the, the roadmap first. Right. It's like singing, you know, Mary had a little lamb and then you just start changing the melody. Every right. time you come around, you're like, <laughs> people go, how do you know that you're done? I'm like, well, when you get to the end of Mary had a little lamb or happy birthday, you know that we're done with one cycle. Yeah. And so the only thing we're doing is just changing it as we go along. Right, so right. So lot. I even wonder about that. Like when everyone's doing the solos, I mean, do you look at each other and you're like, okay, we're done now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of eye contact, you know, recommended. Because you, yeah. sometimes you're like, is he done? I, right. Or is she done? I, I don't know, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you look at him, I'm done. Oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So talk about how did you, have you kind of built your career as far as musicians that you started playing with, because, you know, you journeyed from 
playing with with different musicians to now you know having your own project so do you kind of keep those same musicians how did you decide who you wanted for your project uh, for me music is all about uh connections um not on a bandstand but off the bandstand um and so I, I it was very important for me to feel comfortable number one yeah um, musically but also that knowing that i could trust these guys to give me their honest opinion of the take you know uh and um it was also important to have some veterans on the, on the album so i was mm -hmm. really blessed and honored to have um donald harrison eric reed who was a great mentor of mine um uh dr eddie henderson um javon jackson uh helped uh, produced the album in the beginning and um, a good friend of mine, Dave Stryker, who I ended up putting it out on his label, also a good friend and mentor. Um, these guys are people that I play with, uh, like in my humble beginnings coming to New York in the beginning. Yeah. And um, just, they took me under their wings. I mean, Javon Jackson was a guy that I played with before I played with Kenny. And um, they're also good friends. So it's kind of like in that same kind of circle got it uh, he's the reason why i was able to get donald harrison you know i called Donald. i'll never get a call donald harrison and I'm, i've only met him one time prior to that and i just said hey you know i got javon jackson here you know he's going to help me produce this album and i would love for you to be on my album he's like he lives in new orleans and i recorded in new york in brooklyn and he's like uh well you know you got javon on it okay yeah i'll come and play and i was like well you know i don't really have a lot of money you know he's like, like flying you in right? yeah yeah he's like oh no no <laughs> don't worry about it you know I'll, I'll do my miles you know i'll take i'll take the miles and you know you can just give me what you can and i was just like wow Donald harrison just told me he could just he gonna fly himself up here to play on my record That's so amazing yeah god was good it was all through you know all in it um but yeah those guys you know Learning, hearing about the stories of the older jazz musicians, different scenarios, different situations, and just being able to apply that into the music. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great for the, for me to have to have those guys. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So talking about the the label, <clears throat> like which label that you chose to release your project under, I'm always I'm curious to know just kind of how that process works. I know there's some musicians who are independent and then some musicians who are signed. Kind right. of what's the what's the benefit of having a label and you know what does that actually mean? Right. So for me, um uh Dave's label, he's recorded quite a few records under his own name uh, on his label. And so he was really he's really connected as far as having um his label was connected with having all the publishing and um, uh, resources to get your um, get the right PR mm -hmm, excuse mm -hmm. me, for your record. And so for me, that was the, the biggest thing benefit of me signing under his uh, his label was yeah. that he had the infrastructure in place to get the music out there. Got it. Um, as an independent artist, you know, you're still trying to build your your audience and, yeah. you know, um, I have some social media presence, but I probably should have more, you know, um, and I'm realizing that even during this time, it's like, wow, your social media presence um, really makes a difference. Yeah. And so being under Dave's record label really helped uh, get it to the right people. And so I was able to get it into certain magazines yeah. and get some uh, um, some articles and, and interviews based on uh, my association. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. No, I definitely uh, appreciate hearing that because a lot of people are always, always ask me, you know, how do you get in magazines? How do you get in, you know, this coverage? And it really is based on relationships that you have and, you know, knowing how to get the word out about, you know, about what you're doing. So yeah, yeah that's awesome. That's awesome. So you, how did you know it was the right time to release your own project? Because I mean, you could, probably just be touring for you know on other people so many other people now that you have the privilege of knowing so how did you know okay this is now time for me to do my own project well, you know it's about a confidence nobody can tell you when you're ready um but there's an inner confidence in your ability to be able to uh, write your own music yeah um but gather the musicians and be able to um get to, 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 to get them to understand your story that you're trying to convey, right? Got so it. um, it's, it's, it's a confidence to me that you must have. Um, and also I have 
at that point been performing around New York probably for about 10 years. And so I've, I felt like I've built um, enough respect in a, in a community that if I put this out there, people are going to actually check it out. Yeah. And I had some type of name uh, recognition. Um, yeah. That's something that was important to me um, is when I first moved to New York, I just really wanted to make sure that my name uh, held some weight that I was able to say, oh, McClinty Hunter. Oh, yeah, he's a you know great hell of a musician and a great guy. And so yeah. um, it was just time for me to to step into that leadership role. Um, as the older musicians always tell me that, you know, jazz music is 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 about community but it's also about making sure that your voice is being heard and yeah. being represented. So, um, yeah, it was just time. I felt, yeah. I felt, you know, you just one of those things you just know when you know. And um, and when everything lined up the way it did, I was like, okay, this is the sign. All right, All right. Great, put it out. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. So talking about that confidence, I definitely would, would describe you as a super confident musician i think i saw a facebook video you did i don't know if it was early, earlier this year or last year where you were playing with a pianist i can't remember her name oh, and yeah. you just yeah. pl you just played like you had been playing for years and <laughs> you just learned the song yeah, in that yeah, moment that like <laughs> yeah i was like i didn't <laughs> that was crazy I, I would never forget that i told my wife i was like helen just asked me to play I don't know. She's like, you just need a snare drum and a rise cymbal. I'm like, okay. I mean, hey, whatever. You know, I, let's, let's play some music, you know? But again, that goes to show, like, I've played enough. I've been in a lot of different situations from, you know, the best thing about my background is that I started so young, mm -hmm. you know, believe it or not, like little things of being able to be, to take uh, constructive criticism, right? You know, from being at the church and, you know, your mom looking over at me and saying, right. you're playing too loud. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, or, or, or you know, Darren saying, you play it too fast, slow down or whatever, you know, having that ability and going from there and then, you know, you're playing at school and mm -hmm. then you're playing with uh, the Soulful Symphony and you're playing, you know, all of these different genres, different clubs, different venues. You start to realize that it's all a language. So it's like, I could speak. I yeah. can carry myself in different social settings. So this is going to be the same thing. I'm just going to limit myself to two instruments <laughs> and I'm just going to keep my ears open and hopefully not get in her way of what she's trying to do. Yeah. And, but also add something to it. Right. And so I was really surprised that I received the, the amount of feedback that I did, the positive feedback, because I was like, I didn't, I mean, I, I thought it was great, but I was like, I play, you know, it's one of those things as a drummer, you always want to play like fast. And, you know, right, right, right. Show off all the chops, you know, I'm like, yeah, I was playing way more stuff on the other video, but no, this is something that just, it just goes to show that um, being musical will always uh, resonate with people. Yeah. And so I think less in that particular fashion, less was more. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So talk about your the teaching part of your career. So you teach at the KIPP Academy. Mm -hmm. And how did you start doing that? Was that something you always wanted to do? And, and also curious how that has been going with the pandemic? Yes, 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 yes. So I will be entering uh, next fall, uh, this fall, uh, my 14th year with uh, KIPP. Wow. Um, you know, again, it's about connections. Um, I met um, a good friend of mine, Mark Williams. Shout out to Mark. Uh, Mark uh, went to Howard with me, and he's the one that recommended me to Kip. Um, I came to Kip and, you know, uh, fell in love with the uh, the mission. Uh, they're they're you know talk a lot about character development, and um, which is something that I feel like that is what really sets you apart. Most yeah. people are talented, but it's about who you are and what you bring as a person um, to the table that really um, allows a lot more doors to be open, I believe. And so I, I f kind of fell in love with that. Every kid at the school takes music. Um, the goal was only for me to be there for two two years. <laughs> when I first started, I was like, I'm just going to do this for two years and I'm going to roll out. Yeah. And um, because it was a challenge, I'm teaching middle school kids. Ooh. Every kid has to take me yeah, Every kid has to take music. Yeah. It's an orchestral program, string bass. You know, I'm a drummer. 
I took, you know, in, in at Howard, I, I took a string class for my string method class, um, but uh, I hadn't studied strings in, at that time for about five years. So I'm yeah. like, but when I got there, um, you know, initially I was supposed to study under this guy, but they ended up letting him go. Oh, wow. And so, yeah. And so then <laughs> they come to me like my first year, I was supposed to study with him for a whole year mm -hmm. internship. And I said, okay, look, we're going to put you into another school the following year. You'll be fine. You'll learn all the management. You'll learn all the, you know, expectations, how to get the routines down, and you'll be fine for your own program. Okay, yeah, great. Like two months in, they're like, okay, we're letting him go. We want you to take <laughs> over. I'm like, yo, I don't know what I'm doing. But um, I stuck with it. And, um, yeah, it's turned out to be the most uh, rewarding um, and positive change, not only for – really for myself, yeah. they, they it, you know, teaching kids and young people, they keep you honest. Um, they, they, That's know very you, true. they know when you're not, you know, they're like, nah, you're not telling the truth. You right. Know, you're not speaking facts here. We go out. But it's really helped me out with that. And then, um, yeah, this pandemic has been, uh, <laughs> it has been, it's been, you know, challenging, but at the same time, very rewarding. Um, again, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah. So you teach them virtually. Yeah, now, I'm teaching then. them virtually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so every kid takes music. So I'm teaching a whole school. Um, you know, I have another co-teacher. And uh, basically, um, we divided them up by grades. And, um, you know, I was able to give two or three assignments a week. Wow. Um, a lot of it, uh, because it's a, it's a performing-based um, school, um, so we provide a lot of instruments for the students. Unfortunately, we're not able to take those instruments home. So right. I was doing things like, um, you know, for my eighth graders, uh, they like to call me the life coach as well, because I, I will preach. Oh. I preach to them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm like, you want sermon number or what? Which sermon do you want today? Because uh, you guys are, so I, I preach to them a lot, but I give them a lot of motivational uh, uh, <clears throat> videos and things like that. And, and and different things about hip hop history. And they really yeah. enjoyed it producing. And, and so the fifth graders were, got them into some percussion ensembles, you know, driving their parents crazy at home, banging on stuff. But uh, I loved it, <laughs> you know, I loved it. But um, yeah, Kip has been, it's, it's been, a, it's played a major role in my um, professional uh, development. Yeah. And, and also been very uh, cordial with me, allowing me at some points in time to, to travel and to tour, so. You're That's welcome. awful. So is that the first time that you started conducting when you were working with them? Or? <laughs> yeah, you know, you take a, you take a, a conducting class in, uh, in you know, in, in undergrad as a music educator, uh, ed education major. But yeah, that was my first time really like getting in there and like, okay, let's see if, what you wow. really remember. And, That's uh, awesome. So how does that feel? Like, like what, how does it feel conducting versus, you know, drumming it, like do it, you enjoy it or is it like this kind of feels weird but i can do it yeah no it's i enjoy it because it's like it's very similar um as a drummer you're like the band leader yeah so you're always orchestrating and doing different things musically that the, the people will respond to in the band and so it's very similar to that as a conductor you're doing the same thing it's just that you're just not making sound you're doing it all with your hands and so whatever gesture that i make they will respond yeah um and so it's something that is uh it's super cool i really enjoy it and i get a chance to write a lot of the arrangements nice excuse me for them so that has really um helped develop my musicianship as well which yeah. also led to me being comp even more confident about writing my own music for my album so it's like that's okay awesome. everything is kind of coming together yeah it works together that's that's yeah. amazing so t you're talking about you know teaching students and there's a lot of students who study <clears throat> jazz and who study music but why do you think even though a lot of jazz musicians are young it seems like the genre kind of skews to an older demographic why do you think that is um intimidation mm. i think most people are intimidated by it um sonically when i say sonically i mean like the way the music sounds compared yeah. to what's actually on the radio what they're accustomed to that that heavy bass that you know those hi-hats and 808s and all that stuff 
um, it's not it's not in the music. Right. And so you're like actually hearing real instruments. So people are <laughs> like, what is this? This is what, you know, but also it, it, it's a, um, it's about what I feel like now music has become only has one function mm -hmm. to party. <laughs> you know, people don't use like listen to music for reflection or you know, they're feeling melancholy, or they, you know, yeah, yeah. I find that even my, even my peers, I'm like, you know, what else do you listen to? I only listen yeah. to Migos. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> that's it? Like, All the time? <laughs> yeah, like even when you're sad, like you know, like you don't look, you know. But people, I find, are not. Um, that is the capacity to be able to sit down and allow the music to like really uh, come over you. Yeah, and, and really become more introspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that, as a society, I think we're getting away from. Yeah, but believe it or not, there's still a lot of young people that is learning to play the music, mm -hmm. but the audience is not getting younger. And yeah, so that's we, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because in college, you know, you got jazz all across in all these different schools. They're constantly putting out these different artists every year. And then you go to these clubs and it's, you know, it's generally the, the, the 40 plus crowd. Right, you know? right, right. Um, and so what I'm trying to do now is my, uh, um, my mission. Another reason why I teach is I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to get these kids indoctrinated into like live music. Yeah. Like the power of live music. And so, you know, I, I have found that, you know, most of them, they want to stay with it, even though they hate it. <laughs> I shouldn't say they hate it, but they, they don't like it. By the time they leave, the you know, yeah, they're with me for four years. And I'm like, yeah. we're doing music, let's right. do it, practice, da, da 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 They like it when we play, you know, but they're like, oh man, by the time I, when I get to high school, no more music. But a lot of them want to stick with it once they, they graduate and they come back. They're like, I should have stayed with Mr. Hunter. That's like, awesome. But they, they love it though. They love yeah. listening to it. And so that's what it's all about. Yeah. So what advice would you give if, if for someone who might want to explore jazz, but be like, oh, I listened to this and I wasn't really feeling it. So is there a kind of an artist you would recommend starting with? Sure. Um, there's so many. Um, you know, uh, one thing about now that jazz is becoming um, the generation of musicians are have like have had one foot also in hip hop. So you're starting to hear some of those influences, but somebody like, um, for me, even Eric Reed, I, I really yeah. enjoy uh, piano, piano player. Um, if you really love some, uh, some like gospel oriented vocals with jazzy, um, the Baylor, the Baylor Project, they're great. Marcus and Gene Baylor. Um, Kenny Garrett is always uh, somebody who has a little bit more of a, a smoother approach. Yeah. Um, you always, you know, um, Yellow Jackets, that's one of my contemporary groups that I really enjoy yeah. growing up. Um, let's see. I mean, you can't go wrong with Miles Davis or Coltrane. Those guys, right. you know, created the language. Um, but it's just, a, you know, Sarah Vaughn, uh, Ella Fitzgerald. I mean, list can, you know, I can go on for days. It's really about um, finding an instrument, I think. If you like, oh, man, I really like the saxophone. Okay. You know, Javon oh, Jackson. Good. You know, there's something that you could kind of come at it from that particular approach. Yeah. And then that leads you in a certain direction. Got it. Got it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for those, for those tips. I'm going to have to look up some of those, some of those um, yeah, the artists you mentioned. I had definitely. not listened to them. So I definitely will be doing that. So tell us about this documentary. How did you get <clears throat> that going? Yes. So that is something that I'm still like, I haven't seen it yet. I have to be honest. I haven't seen oh, it. Oh wow. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. Um I've been waiting to uh see it. I'm I'm planning my wife is uh planning a premiere for me to, to nice. see. Nice. So um but this documentary is by a gentleman, um his name is Jesse Bermudez. Jesse I taught back um when he was uh I think fifth probably sixth grade when I took over the program and um got a chance to see him develop and graduate high school. Um he was a drummer, so a great kid, comes from a great family. Um, and he decided that he wanted to uh, study film in college. And so his senior year, uh, 
you know, he comes to me and says, hey, Mr. Hunter, I need to do a senior project and um, I want you to be the subject of my, uh, of this film. And nice. I was like, oh man, okay, cool. Like, great, man, I really appreciate it. I'm glad that, you know, wow, I didn't know I made a difference, uh, you know, made that much of an impact, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know it. And then he started showing me like trailers for it. And I was like, hold on, you got like an, all these kids that, um, that I taught, um, they're still friends. One thing about this particular school, oh, that's awesome. um, they are, uh, we do a great job of building community. And so the kids stay, stay connected. You know, they're like 25 years old and they're like, wow. still like, yeah, I'm like, you still hanging out? Y'all still <laughs> like, yeah, they're like, yeah, you know, and like, so they got them all together and some former colleagues of mine. And I was, yeah, I'm st I was just touched by the trailer. I was just like, wow. I, can't, I don't know if I could, you know, I want to watch it, but I'm just like, uh, there's something about it is just like, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Um, that somebody would put you in that light, you know, um, for me, um, Darren is, 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 is that guy for me. Yeah. And so, uh, he like, man, I almost broke down. He called me. He's like, hey, Mr. Hunter, I need to come to the school. I need to, you know, do one more interview for you before you leave. I said, okay, cool. You know, he's going to the school. He gave me an interview. And he's like, listen. And I'm casually talking to him. I'm like, hey, so uh, what you doing this weekend? Oh, man, I'm going to Baltimore. I said, okay, cool. Yeah, man, get some grabs. Oh, yeah. You want to uh, do an interview for Darren? On, on Darren? I was like, what are you talking about? For your documentary? I was like, what? Wow. Like, so, so you didn't even know they were like doing all that no, research in the no, back. I, yeah, wow. I was like, how did you, how did you put all of this? You know, so I've been extremely touched by it. Um, the gentleman won a uh, a New York Film Academy Award uh, from it, and that's amazing. It was supposed to premiere in Cannes uh, over the over in in in, in France um, this summer. And wow. So, um, yeah, I've just been like. You know, he was supposed to show it on a big screen. So I was yeah. like, I told him back in uh, March because it was supposed to happen in uh, June. So I was like, and he's like, when this started happening, I was like, well, maybe everything will be over. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, this is going to kind of come like in. Blow like, blow real yeah, quick, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to wait until June. He's like, yeah, we're going to do it in June. Then June came and I was like, this is not going to happen. Yeah. So I really wanted to, you know, see it on the big screen. But um, my wife was like, no, 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 I'm going to hook it up. And so we're going to... um they're gonna premiere it at um, at my church. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, in Yonkers, and he's gonna come by, and we're gonna do like a Q and A. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be special. I'm nice. looking forward to it. That's amazing. I mean, I think that is an incredible testament to you know to your influence and the impact that you've been able to have um, just on those young guys. I think that is, I mean, that's phenomenal, and that's something that I know they will carry with them. Um, forever. So I am, I saw the trailer too, and I, I didn't even know it was one of your students who, um, who produced it. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm like, to this day, I'm like, wow. I mean, I just remember, you know, he was a little guy, you know, now he's like a grown man and I'm yeah. like, wow, like, okay. It, I mean, yeah, it's, it's very touching and I'm super humbled by the whole experience. And, um, yeah, it's amazing just for me, like, just to see the, my former students, like, how many, yeah. you know, just in a trailer, I'm like, oh, there's Randy. Right. Oh, there's Jeffrey. Like, <laughs> and their names came back to me. It was like, yeah. you know, the kids, used, they always tease me, like, you forgot my name. I'm like, <laughs> you know how many kids I taught at this point? Uh, you know, like, uh. but, um, man, it's been, it's been, it's going to be great. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So this has been an amazing conversation. I've really, really enjoyed it. So thank you so, so much for no, 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 your no time. Um, so in closing, what advice would you give for anyone who's listening who wants to consider or might be considering a career in the music industry? Yes. Um, wow. There's so much to give, but I will try to be concise. Um, I believe that you have to, number one, know your craft. You gotta know your craft. Um, whatever you could do to study. Um, one of the things that um, you gotta out hustle the next person. This is a very competitive biz business. And so uh, the more you know about what it is that you're doing and actually can um, deliver on your word is, um, will take you far. And also just 
honestly, professional etiquette. Mm. Just being there on time, showing up to, you know, showing up, dressed apart, knowing the music, knowing what to do. Um, obviously now having a social media presence will, will definitely help you when it comes to you doing things independently. But when I think about being a musician, um, you just want to be able to, um, to, to, to be sociable yeah. in, in many different um, environments. Yeah. Um, there's quite a few people that I, I love them to death. They're great musicians, but for certain situations, I may steer in a different direction based on their personality. And I know those things you can't necessarily change, but it's something that you just need to be aware of. How about yeah. that? And so I think I've gotten some gigs just because I'm cool. I'm laid back and I'm going to do the gig properly. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. it's going to show up okay. I'm going to smell good. And, hey, okay, it's teeth and <laughs> brush. You know, all right, cool. You can play the drums, play the drums. Because um, now it's at a point where everybody can play. So now it's like, what's actually setting you apart? Yeah. And so um, those things. And for me, um, keeping God first, Jesus Christ, I mean, that's, that's for me, it's probably opened up more doors than I could ever have done on my own. Yeah. I know for sure has gotten me to play much better than I ever could have before without him. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that spiritual, um, spiritual connection needs to be there because again, this is a very competitive, uh, industry. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have to be able to dig deep to survive. Um, and we're seeing, we're seeing it right now. Like, you know, when is this going to end? When, when is this going to, you know, who knows? Nobody knows, you know? And so what's going to sustain you? Um, and how versatile can you be within the music business? Right. So you're doing things, you know, you're, you're, you have your own podcast, you're, you know, I'm sure you're writing. Um, that's something that I'm even thinking about, you know, how can I get, become a more of a, a representative not only as a musician, as an educator, but now I'm thinking, yeah. like, hey, maybe I need to write write some articles or um, <clears throat> there's just so many different aspects of music that um, the business that you can get yourself into. So don't limit yourself just like, I'm going to be a star. Right. And I'm just going to, you know, play the saxophone forever. You know, it's like not many people just get to that point where they're able to make a great living just playing a saxophone. Right. You, know, so. you have to have versatility. Yeah, you definitely got yeah. to be versatile. Yeah. Yeah. That's I awesome. Agree 100%. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. It was amazing. And um, I definitely look forward to continuing to follow your career. And I can't wait for this documentary to come out. Will people be able to see it? Like, will it be yes, available? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So right now, uh, I believe it's only in private, uh, private viewing. Um, I think he's going to be actually releasing it to the public very soon. But I will certainly... Uh, make sure that you get that. Uh, yes. Get the, uh, the 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 website and all the, the passwords or whatever you need in order to watch <laughs> it. Um, awesome. Yeah. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this conversation, and I look forward to hearing more. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Again, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, and I love what you're doing. So I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks.